Okay, I'm going to break down the basic attention token white paper that was released by Brave Software a couple of weeks ago. In my opinion, this is one of the single most compelling projects in the entire Ethereum space right now. And if successful, it will fundamentally change the way that advertising works on the internet. And I don't say that lightly, but that really is the scope of what this project is trying to accomplish. And obviously, this is only a written paper, not production code, so there's a long way to go before an impact is actually felt. But the idea is so interesting that it does merit some serious consideration. Okay, and we come out by unequivocally declaring that digital advertising is broken. And why is it broken? It's because a fundamentally simple marketplace that has three players, advertisers, publishers, and users, has become overrun by middlemen. Fundamentally, digital advertising is, is a kind of simple concept. You have advertisers, such as Coca-Cola, you have publishers like the New York Times, and then you have users. And the aim of this entire ecosystem is for the advertisers to get the user's attention. And advertisers have money that they're willing to spend on getting users' attention because they'll lead to further sales down the road. But, you know, users aren't going to just go to Coca-Cola.com and look at their inventory probably they're going to be focusing their attention on content websites like the New York Times. And, you know, what that opens up the opportunity for is some sort of exchange of information where the publishers that have users' attention can then sell that attention to advertisers in exchange for money. And that's, you know, monetizing their content. So what this marketplace right here, you know, should be, you know, relatively straightforward. It's, hey, I have some sort of user attention. I need to make some money from it. But, but in, in actuality, it ends up being extremely complicated. You know, the, the publishers aren't just selling your attention and valuating it on their own and then, you know, pricing it. You have these ad exchanges like DoubleClick from Google and Facebook Exchange that will value users' attention and do real-time exchanges where advertisers can then buy that attention, you know, in real time. But it's more complicated than that because you have retargeting services like AdRoll that will follow users across the internet to see their browsing history and see what they've looked at to better try to, you know, get an idea of what ads they want. You have supply side providers like Rubicon, demand side providers. You have analytic tools, you have ad servers, media agencies, and this entire ecosystem ends up being extremely destructive for everyone. So the way that all of this complexity actually gets implemented is in the form of JavaScript injections onto these websites. And if you look at the actual cost in terms of bandwidth of going to various popular content websites, the actual cost of loading the JavaScript for all the complex ad tracking behavior is actually higher on almost every website than the actual cost of loading the editorial content, which is insane. It's, it's absolutely insane. And they have this really cool graph here of this is all of the JavaScript that is injected onto your page when you visit TMZ.com. So this is TMZ.com and then this is all the JavaScript um, code that you're downloading. And you might be thinking, well, okay, I'm downloading a lot of JavaScript that's tracking me across the internet, but you know, at least I get to read things for free. And false, you're wrong. You actually are paying for this as they outline in the introduction. They say that every single, because the cost of downloading all of this JavaScript whenever you visit sites, this actually increases everybody's monthly bandwidth bill on mobile by $23 per month in just charges for your data. And you know, that's crazy because that is a couple hundred dollars a year that everyone is paying. And, and not only that, you're losing battery life and you have slow page loads, so it's a bad user experience, and you're having your privacy repeatedly violated by having all your behavior tracked and sent into a database for to be sold to advertisers, and you have malvertisements of people selling adware and different viruses on computers, and the ecosystem is just, it's really not helping anybody. So in response to this, users have begun in, in mass to install ad blockers on their browsers. And right now, there's over 600 million devices that use ad blocking software. And this number is growing very quickly, and it is a complete threat to publishers all or everywhere. So now, you know, for example, if I go to like Forbes.com and I have an ad blocker installed on my Chrome browser, um, it, it's going to block me. It's going to give me the stop gate where I can't even go to the site unless I uninstall my ad blocker. And not even that, it can actually detect the specific ad blocker that I'm using and tell me how to disable it. So now you've got ad blockers detecting ads and then sites detecting ad blockers. And, and I mean, this is just a joke. This is like an absolute clown for how the internet should be functioning.
I didn't even mention fraud in this industry either, but fraud is a massive problem because it's it, there's, first off, a lot of bots that are constantly paying ad exchanges and crawling websites. And it's also just in general, really hard to measure how much user attention is actually focused on these ads because you know, like all this JavaScript code is super messy. And then there's inaccurate reporting because there's no incentive for companies in these middle positions to actually tell the truth when they're exchanging data with other people. So it's very, very hard for publishers and advertisers to get accurate information about how much attention is actually being spent. People estimate that the amount of fraud in the digital advertising space is in the multiple billions of dollars every year. So that's just billions of dollars that are just being completely wasted and un unaccountable to anyone. So, so what has happened because of this? What is the result of this complex ecosystem is that publishers and advertisers are pushing more and more of their money towards social media advertising. And that very specifically means that they're advertising on Facebook and YouTube. YouTube, of course, being owned by Google. So right now, in, in 2016, 73% of all online digital ad revenue, right? 73% came from just Google and Facebook alone. And not only that, 99% of all the growth in the advertising ecosystem in terms of the amount advertisers are spending came from just Facebook and Google. So basically we have a complete duopoly on advertising revenue where advertisers are just buying ads on Facebook because it's a better way to reach users because Facebook at least is one party that's accountable with no middlemen. And they have, you know, like better tools for measuring analytics and click throughs. So because all the advertising money is going into Facebook and YouTube, any publisher that's trying to make a business out of publishing content has to play in the Facebook and YouTube ecosystems as well. And this is really problematic because we have a duopoly of two large companies that have complete control over publishing revenue. And you're already starting to see this with independent journalists that talk about controversial political issues where YouTube is just cracking down on the ad revenue they make and they have absolutely no recourse for it because YouTube can just flag videos for demonetization at will. And, and again, you have no recourse whatsoever because you're basically selling your soul to them when you publish on their platform. Twitter is you know, almost even a lost cause at this point because they just ban everybody that talks about controversial stuff. But you know, like now they're starting to do things called shadow banning where they'll just throttle specific tweets and they'll throttle hashtags and, and just not let people get the word out as well if they're going counter narrative to the way that the executives think about the company. Facebook famously is governed by an opaque algorithm called EdRank. And everything that you see in your newsfeed, nobody knows how this algorithm works. And that's really concerning because now they're starting to play with things like tagging posts as fake news if they don't like, you know, the politics that they issue. They've even announced that they're going to start, you know, putting out filtering services ahead of the German elections in 2017 in September. And, you know, that's really concerning too because, like, who's auditing this? Who is, you know, saying, hey, let me see your algorithm that you're using to filter out fake news because maybe you're manipulating it somehow. Like, it's just impossible to know. And this is where Brave is going to be in a very interesting position. So Brave is a technology startup that started in San Francisco a couple years ago. It was started by a guy named Brendan Eich, who is the creator of the JavaScript programming language, which is the most popular programming language in the world right now. He was also an OG developer on the Netscape Navigator browser and the co-founder of the Mozilla Foundation, which obviously created the Firefox web browser. And it's not just Brendan Eich working on this. There's other developers from Firefox and developers from the Tor web browser as well. And they raised um, a seed round in November 2015 and then a second seed in 2016 led by Founders Fund, which is Peter Thiel's venture capital arm. And, you know, Peter Thiel finds his way somehow into every Ethereum investment. But they, they're a really interesting company. So Brave has already shipped a web browser that does some pretty interesting things. So I'm on crunchbase.com right now. And if I scroll up, you'll notice that here is an ad slot where somebody's showing me an ad for perfume. I don't know why. But if I open up the Brave browser and I go to the exact same website that I was on, you'll see that there's no ad that's loaded here. It is automatically blocking every ad on the internet that I'm trying to go to. And it's blocking the JavaScript from even being loaded so that the page loads quicker. Also, you know, if I go to like Forbes.com and we saw that, you know, giant ad blocker paywall before, I just go right through. I, I, I'm just going around all those ad blockers on the internet. So they have a browser that's already making the experience of browsing the internet a lot better because it's just blocking all these ads by default. But not only does it block ads, if I go to preferences, and I go to payments, you'll see that there's this really interesting feature where it's actually tracking the different sites that I go to locally on the browser. And it's looking at how many views I have on each site and the time spent, and then thus the percentage of time that I spent there. And it lets me add funds to my browser, either with a debit card or with Bitcoin and soon to be Ethereum. 
and then just set a monthly budget. And then at the end of every month, it, I can you know choose which sites I want to include in this payout, and it'll just automatically send a little bit of money to each of the sites that I had been visiting. And that's a really interesting feature because all of my browsing behavior is encrypted and anonymized locally in my browser. And then the payments are just sent out to the companies based on my usage, but they don't get any of my personal information. They don't get any of my previous browsing information or anything like that. So this is a really interesting first step, but obviously, you know, having this optional payment system is not going to get mass adoption because why would people spend money when they don't have to? So they're gonna have to do something more than just this if they really wanna make a run at Facebook and Google. And that is where this idea of the basic attention token comes into play. So because Brave has their own browser, it's very possible to, at a native level, detect things like, okay, what is the active tab that the user is on right now? And then maybe assuming that this piece of Crunchbase was an actual ad, it could detect, okay, how many pixels of browsing space is this ad taking up? And then where on the page is it? And how long does the user view it? And they can combine those metrics together to create um, some sort of mathematical equation that tells you how much attention was spent on that given ad. And they can normalize it to basically say between a score of one and seven, as they propose in this preliminary white paper, um, just make a metric of how much attention a user spent on the ad. And they didn't need to download all this complicated JavaScript to do it. It could just be natively baked into the browser. And then you could have something which they propose to be called the basic attention token, which is an ERC-20 token built on top of Ethereum that advertisers purchase. And if they want to purchase advertising space on a publisher's website, they'll send these basic attention tokens to the publishers. And based on the attention that the users spend on the advertisements, some of the tokens will be sent to the users as well. So the publishers are getting paid by the advertisers for the screen real estate, but the users are also getting compensated for the attention that they're spending with these attention tokens. But what makes it really interesting is that if this ecosystem gains traction, these attention tokens are just you know regular tokens on top of Ethereum, which means that they're freely tradable by any user, so you can have economies develop around them. But also, um, they're usable by third-party applications. So any person, just ad hoc, you know, could make premium video content and users have to you know, send a little bit of attention tokens to your site in order to access that video content. And you could have third-party ecosystems emerging um, based on this like token of attention. And in fact, Brave talks about this in the paper that they are really aiming to create free and open source infrastructure. Like they want this to be part of web standards going forward. And yeah, this is a really ambitious idea that, okay, we are going to build a protocol token on Ethereum that models user attention and then create a free and open economy around transacting this token. And somehow that is going to end up being better for users, for publishers, and for advertisers. And obviously token mechanics in Ethereum is like really bleeding edge. This is still an area of active research. There are very few good examples of people building large scale successful businesses around third party Ethereum tokens. But I do appreciate the Brave team's kind of ambition and just saying YOLO. Like, we know that this is not figured out all the way. We have some ideas about how it might work, but we're not sure. But we're just going to do it. We're just going to start fighting on the vanguard and playing around with these different ideas because we know things are really messed up and somebody's got to just break out of the mold and try to do something. And obviously, there's a lot of complexity and, you know, problems that will emerge. I mean, botting is going to be enormous if users can make money from their intention, attention. Like, what's to stop 16-year-old kids in Romania from scaling up these massive botnets, pretending to be users and just mining money? How are they going to deal with those kinds of incentives? Among other things. But, but again, like, like, this is just so cutting edge that it's just so interesting of a concept that I just, I mean, I feel like you just have to do it and just see what ends up happening. Yeah, and then one more thing that's tucked away at the bottom of this white paper, they mentioned that they are thinking about using opt-in and transparent machine learning algorithms for assessing user interests. Um, and I'm very curious what they mean by the word transparent in this context, but if they are talking about doing something like open sourcing the algorithms that they use to target ads to users, um, I think that is extremely interesting because obviously Facebook and Google are super opaque about the algorithms that they use. But if, if there's a transparent way to, you know, have advertisers matching content to users, this is very interesting. 
So yeah, that's the basic attention token white paper. It's a really interesting read. I, I highly encourage anyone to check it out. It is definitely light on the Ethereum details about how the token mechanics will actually work in production. And I don't think that's anything malicious. I think it's honestly because they don't know. I, I think that the Brave team is just starting to mess around with Ethereum. They think it's the, the right direction to go in, and I completely agree. But they're not you know, sure about how the specifics are gonna work. And I think that's just the kind of thing that we're gonna need to figure out going forward. Yeah, so obviously like you can't like make the assertion that this is going to be super disruptive until you have specifics and you can see product more more kind of production code but like man this idea is so interesting and so necessary that like i just think it warrants like more you know forgive the pun but attention from the community because what they are going for is is real is real